you know what I know and the Holy Ghost, praise God, you know you know that revival is happening here. Amen. We are in revival. Amen. Amen. We're not going to have. See, revival is for dead people. That's what revival means, to revive. Well, we ain't dead in here. So we ain't having revival. We can go ahead and say we're having count meeting, glory to God. That's more likely. We haven't count meeting. The revival has started. Don't get me wrong. The reviving of dead people, spiritually, has started. And God is what? Reviving. A revival is for your city. Now, there are some churches that need revival in their church because they're dead. But you, when you read about a revival, a revival is something that happened to a city. Praise God. The city catches on fire. And the city begins to get revived. See, you're already supposed to be on fire. Amen. You're supposed to be taking the revival to the city. Go ahead. Thank you. You're already supposed to be Taking it to the streets, glory to God. Hallelujah. Everything I do has some, some of the song about it. I'm sorry, but that's just me. I had on my Facebook one time that uh, I forgot how the little saying went, but it says, if you can't deal with me putting a song to everything you say, then be friendly or something. But I mean, when I'm at work, when I'm out and I hear something, I always have to put a song title with it. So, yeah. praise God, or a song. But we're supposed to be taking it to the streets, praise God. Yeah. And when you take it to the streets and revival hits the streets, they'll be dancing in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. They'll be dancing in the streets. They'll be praising in the streets. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's what we're going to do. That's our goal. Is, that'll be a t-shirt. We're taking it to the streets. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're the street team. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, we need to be taking it to the streets. Take it to the city. Well, I'm telling you, October the 30th, even before that, uh, October the 30th, we're going to take it to the streets. Amen? Amen. And so the 3030 Festival's coming here. And, uh, man, we are going to go out. We're going to evangelize this city. Oh, we're going to start We're going to start handing out flyers. We're going to put up flyers. And I'm talking about we're going to do it right this time. Yeah. Amen? Because yeah. yeah. we're going to see this place packed out now yeah. here. And we're going to be a witness. And I'm not going to be ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. This is what he's called us to do. He told us to come to, you know, I'm sick of sitting down. Yes, Lord. You know, it's the same thing as, you know, well, we, we weren't called to be bench warmers. And I like what Pastor always said. Pastor said, we're not supposed to sit ye. Amen. God told us to go ye. So we're not going to see it. Say oh, sit ye yeah. and won't do nothing. He said, go ye in all the world and Amen. preach the gospel. Praise yeah. God. And that's what, what? Preach the good news. That why, well, what's the good news of somebody? Amen. You see a meth addict. You see a crackhead. Amen. Guess what? You can be delivered from that. You don't have to do that anymore. Praise that's good news to them. Amen. Amen. You can live a life full of joy. You can live a life uh, uh, free from the drugs and the, and the alcohol, praise Amen. God. You don't have to live your life like that. And you can still have fun. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. What strength is trying to tell people? Yeah. You can still have fun as a Christian. You don't have to do all that junk, man. And, I, I, and I'm telling you what, this is our place. We've been talking about a place called there. But that Georgia is our place Amen. called there. Amen. Amen. And you got to know, and you got to know it in your spirit, you got to know it in your heart, that is this the place that God has called you to? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Know it. Know it. And if you know it, then don't let the devil try to steal it from you. Because let me tell you, the enemy's coming. Yeah. The enemy's coming. Yeah. He's going to batter you. He's going to, he's going to, <laughs> Oh, I just want to, you know, sometimes now sometimes we get a little vacation every now and then, you know. He kind of leg as well. What's he doing? He's retreating. That's why we say, man, I kind of had a vacation from the devil this week. Well, he's going, uh, your vacation's about to be over because all he did was retreat to figure out what the next move and attack is going to be. And I'm not lifting up the devil or anything like that, but I'm just telling you, as a Christian, you're going to be under attack. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not, then Something you need to get born again. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Something, Something is wrong if you're not under the attack of the enemy. As I said, there's those vacation times. Oh, they feel so good. 
I mean, dealing with this, I don't know, I don't think mine's ever lasted 24 hours, but I've had a, I've had a break sometimes, though, it was just, you know, good, you're just in this place that was, whoo, there's peace, and there's joy, and there's, man, there's happiness, and everything, joy, and right, and then, boom, you get jack slapped again, you know, think, you know, by the enemy coming. Not that it didn't take a surprise, you expected it, it was going to happen, but, uh, uh the enemy is always going to be on the attack. What's he trying to do? He's trying to get you to pull back yes. from what God has called you to do. Amen. To carry on. What's he trying to do to us? Pull back from what he's called us to do in this city. And that was to and that was to bring the good news, to bring a message to this city. Praise right. God. Yeah. Lord of God. And he was, we are sent ones. We didn't get mad at our pastor and go, well, bless God, we'll just go start our own church. You no, know, we didn't get mad at our pastors. What we were doing? We were called of God, first of all. And then our pastors set us apart, just like you see whenever they were making disciples, first of all, they set them apart, or apostles, right? They set them apart. They laid hands on them. Our pastors laid hands on us. And then they sent them out. Praise God. And that's what he did. Our pastors says, I'll, I'll never forget the day. We always knew we were called to be pastors. And uh, I see the vision a little bit starting to come back. When we first went to our pastors, we were first start, we first started going to River of Life Church, amen. Well, we, you know, Russian women was all going there. We still had our own hair and all that stuff, you know. But I remember walking into Pastor Alvin Terry's office, and I said, praise God, hallelujah. I said, well, I believe God's called to be pastors and they said, well, amen, praise God. We believe that too. And I said, I believe God has called us to be a rock and roll church. <laughs> and it was like, praise God. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's just that look on her. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, glory to God. Well, we can see you've got some training to do here. <laughs> but you know what? Guess what? Part of that vision's fulfilling, amen. Yeah. We got a rock and roll church. We got a roll church here, yeah. man. Praise God. Yeah. So little did I know, even though that was in my heart 20 some years ago, little in my heart did I know that you know we we'd see it in 2008 start to get it coming to pass. What was God doing? God was leading us. You have to forget my Peter Brady stuff this morning. Amen. Yeah. It's not time to change. I already had my change. When it's time to change. Well, it's time. Y'all remember that Brady Book song? But God has already took me and, and, and He set us apart, laid hands on us, and our pastor sent us out July 13, 2008. Glory to God. And we're coming up on our seventh year anniversary in July. Pastor Allen will be here to bring the message to us. Glory to God. And celebrate with us. Your home church is going to be celebrating with us. Praise God. And thinking about us that morning. But when God sent us out, praise God, He sent us with a message, and He and He He sent us to our place. Call He says, Rich and Carrie, get up and go there to the fed. <laughs> this is our there, praise God. God didn't say. I actually did when we were first talking to pastors. I did. I actually said, uh, What do you think about that in Somerville? Somebody goes, No. Because I, don't, I, don't, I ain't got some of it. Because I ain't got some of it in my heart. You know, okay, praise God, we'll just pray about it. You know, because I was trying to bypass the faith and go down. And I was like, oh, you know, which I said, okay, praise God, hallelujah. And uh, so we, not, not really, I'm just kidding. But I was like, uh, hallelujah. So we prayed more about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the faith started coming in our spirits. And we started praying about Lafayette and believing God about Lafayette. And then, uh, and then we go out to eat one night. We were, we were pastors, Applebee's on Brighter Road, and we're sitting there. And uh, so we, we come together, and here and I was sitting there with pastors out in Terry, and I've got how the conversation, we start talking, you know, about the ministry, blah, blah, blah. You always talk about the ministry with pastors. And that's one thing. If you ain't going to talk about Jesus, they'll just get up and leave. So they don't talk about Jesus first. Amen. <laughs> They ain't got time to waste time, amen. They, they, yeah. they're, they're on a mission, praise God. So we're sitting there, we're talking about the Jesus, we're talking about the ministry, and then all of a sudden says, uh, we talk about uh, setting up a uh, prayer tower and all that stuff, and the pastor goes, well, we didn't tell him yet. No, we didn't tell him nothing about the Fed. We didn't say anything about the Fed. He hasn't said anything about the Fed. And we're just sitting there, and we're, we're just, you know, talking, doing our business, and the uh, pastor goes, 
I've got the fat George on my heart. And then Carrie went, we didn't tell Pastor that. But God had been placed a fat George on our heart too, praise God. He says, I think that's what we need to focus on, fat George. He was a set of prayer tower. And amen. you know the story, I can get into that, praise God. Our, 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 I'll preach the visual message another three or four months down the road again. We're going to get your spirit. But uh, this morning we want to talk about a place called there. Amen. A place called there. You, uh, there are several things you need to do. And I'm going to go back over these. Probably every week I'll go back over these. Just so we can uh, keep you, keep you uh, up, to, up to pace of what we're doing. There are several things you need to know uh, to reach the divine place in your life. Known as there. Number one was be sure that God does have a place where He wants you to be. Remember that. That was the first thing we touched on. Be sure that God does have a place where He wants you to be. Then number two, be willing to go there when God tells you to go there. Be willing to go there when God tells you we were willing to go. Amen. We could have put up a fuss and probably missed the whole thing. Well, if we put up a fight, I ain't going. Hey, there ain't no way I'm going there. Huh? I ain't going back to the 50s. I'm going back to, you know, I'm killing. I'm not going down to a fair. Well, we would have wiped this whole thing. You know, the whole thing would have been wiped. Now, God could have placed it in another minister's heart to come down here. But, you know, Catherine Coleman's always said she believes that the uh, anointing that was on her ministry was because a man turned it down. And so God gave it to her. And, uh, you know, God did that. If you pass it up, well, then he'll give it to somebody else. Right. I said, if you pass it up, you lay it down, or you quit, you get started into something, and you quit, God just turned over to somebody else and let them do it. A willing person who will want to do it. That's why in this place, we need, we have an I don't quit attitude. Amen. 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 I, I, I do not quit. I will not quit. For example. Amen. Say that with me. I will not quit. I will, I will not, not quit. quit. All right, God heard you. Praise God. <laughs> All right, I will not quit. Then, number three, forget about the mistakes of the past. Forget about the mistakes of the past. Well, it didn't work. We tried over here and it didn't work. Well, we tried this for a while and it didn't work. Well, I, I, I you know, I, I messed up. I started and I messed up, or maybe I did quit back then. I messed up. You know, I, I've done some things in my life and I messed it all up. Don't you know we serve a forgiving God? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you know we serve a forgiving God? He is the God, let me boldly proclaim, He is the God of second chance today. He is the God of third chance. He is the God of fourth chance. I can go on and on and on because I had to have it. Praise God. i done some messing up in my life. <laughs> Even after, I mean, I'm talking about after I became a Christian, I've done some messing up in my life. I've done some things that weren't of God. I, I, I messed up. Praise God. I've done some things that weren't good. I said some things that weren't good. But thank God we're quick to repent. Amen. And I'm quick to repent. Praise God. But I mess up by repent. Praise God. It's that simple. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many here believe this? Praise God. I ain't going there. I'm going on a rabbit trail. We ain't going there. you got to forget about... That's why Brother Copeland said that's why he writes an outline. Brother Copeland says, I write my outlines and I try to stay in them so I don't... I keep my outlines before me so I don't go off on a rabbit trail. I was about to go off on a rabbit trail. So I'm staying with the outline. Praise God. Hallelujah. And with the Spirit of God. That was the flesh wanting to take the rabbit trail. So the flesh ain't going to take the rabbit trail. Amen. The flesh is in line. The spirit man overtakes the flesh. Praise God. So we're going to forget about the mistakes of the past. You can't do anything about the mistakes of yesteryear. If you ask for forgiveness, listen to me. If you ask for forgiveness, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has already taken care of them. So forget about them. Praise God. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Forget about them. Trust God even if you don't understand why He's calling you to a place there. You put your trust in Him, you don't put your trust in man. You put your trust in God. Man will let you down. I don't like to think this. I don't really want to say this. But can I tell you?
tell you this? If you put your trust in me, you'll get disappointed. That's right. Because I am flesh. Now I'm spirit man, praise God. A lot of people say, well, we're just human. No, we're, we're, we're not human. We're, we're immoral spirits, praise God. Hallelujah. Because I'm getting to the place of where my spirit man is going to override my flesh. 24 yeah. 7. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. That's why I'm getting yeah. myself yeah. like that. Yeah. You really think he can do it? Yeah, I believe that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. My spirit man is going to overtake this flesh. Praise God. And I'm going to walk into things of God. Yeah. Well, he's on. What's that saying? Go, well, he's, you meet people sometimes and go, well, he's so uh, heaven and minded, he's no earthly good. Yeah. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. I don't want to be good to the earth. Amen. I want to be good to my Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But no, you can see, now you can have some people that kind of overtake it and, you know, and go a little crazy with it. I remember one, one time we went to a church and uh, we went to a meeting and uh, we were walking down and I got in the person was, you know, kind of praying to the Holy Ghost on the front row and kind of Oh, I said, praise God, how are you doing this morning? I went, oh, I'm going to forget you, man. Come on, talk. You know? <laughs> but they were, I'm like, I'm like, that's one of them people that's, that's so heavenly minded, they know where to do you. <laughs> but, you know, when you look at it now, they're in the zone, praise God. They were in the zone, praise God. Hallelujah. So you can't do anything about the mistakes of yesteryear. If you've asked for forgiveness, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has already taken care of. Amen. Forget about them, praise Amen. God. Listen to this. Our biggest problem is that because we can't see the light, are you ready? We can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We have a hard time following God today. We only want we only want to know what's ahead before we even get there. You know, that's not how God works. God works by faith. faith. Yeah. 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 And it's taking them yeah. baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. Because can I tell you, if he showed us the big picture about Lafayette, Georgia, if God showed us from the very beginning where we were going to be at in 2000, I said, well, forget that, man. Because I'm going to be honest with you. In my heart, I should have had a big cathedral out here somewhere. For example, with 15,000 people in it, you know. Now, that, that's, that's where I am. I, what, I, what, what does that mean? I'm goal-oriented. Okay? I'm goal-oriented. And so, if you don't set goals in your life, then you're never going to accomplish nothing. That I will just take it one minute. No, you've got to set goals in your life. That's right. And, and, well, what happens if you don't get there? I just keep on going until I get there. Amen. 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 I believe that goes along with what you've done on the stand. Stand. Well, what happens after you stood? Keep, keep on standing. Right. And you keep on standing. And you keep on standing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Those chairs are going to be filled Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Every chair in this auditorium is going to be filled in Jesus' name. So I can say the room I said auditorium. That's my confession of faith, praise God. Auditorium. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every chair in here is going to be filled. And we declare and decree again, these walls will not tell us what we can do. Amen. These walls will not tell us how big or how small we can be. Amen. 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 We declare and decree who we are in Christ Jesus. Our biggest problem is because we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We have a hard time following God to there. We want to see God's plan from the very beginning to the end. But God does not operate that way. With God, you have to take one step at a time by faith. Many times, he's only going to show you one step. But if you take that step, he'll show you the next step. Praise God. I mean, you listen to Brother Copeland, you, you pastor around, tell you know, gives the planets and all those guys. Amen. They took a step when it seemed impossible. They took a step when the finances wasn't there. But God told them to take the step. That's who are you, you going to listen to? Let the Word of God be.
be true. Amen. So Brother Pumpkin said this, and I oh, all love Brother Pumpkin so much. He said he quit, he quit uh, coming up with excuses. Whenever God told him to take a step, he didn't argue, he didn't question. He goes, I took the step. And I don't ask why. I don't get in my mind, oh, I don't know if I can make it or not. When God told me to take the step, I took the step. And I found out he was there. If God told me, start building this building, it's going to cost $5 million. Well, God, I ain't got $5,000. $5 million. Amen. You don't, but he does. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, if you already had everything you needed, it's just like with this church here. If, if you already had everything, if we already had five million sitting in the bank right now, well, what, what kind of faith do we need to go with that? But if he says, uh, Richard Carey, you're, you're going to build a, uh, you know, whatever, you're going to build a $1.5 or a $2.5 million building, well, God, we, we got that. He didn't ask us if we had it. He said, build it. <laughs> so what we got to do, we got to take that step, praise God. Hallelujah. We got to step. If he said, Rich, it's time to step out into full-time ministry now. Uh, well, we ain't got no money in the bank, huh? He didn't ask if we had any money in the bank. I lose my insurance. He's the healer, isn't he? Amen. Is he not the provider? Amen. Uh, didn't he say if, uh, uh, if his eye is on the spirals, praise God? Yes. How much more is he looking after you today, praise God? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, it's got to be God said right. and not you said. <laughs> well, I'm tired of working here, bless God, and I'm just going to quit and believe God. No, you're in trouble. You're about going welfare. That's right. <laughs> you might as well get the food stamps rolling because you're going to be. Have a little talk with God before you do. Yeah, have a little talk with Jesus because he'll make it right for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to quit, bless God. You know, that's, a, that's such a tempter because in my heart, I see so much to do. Amen. And can I tell you this? I will be busy. You know, I'm not going to, you know. Just a church our size. If I was to, if, if, I, if God told me to step in the full time, there's so much going on now, I'll be so busy. So it's not a problem being busy in the kingdom. There's not a problem being busy, busy about full time ministry. It's you got to wait on God to call the shot. Yeah. Amen? You got to wait, wait on God to call the shot. That's why, uh, just like playing in the NFL, you've got a certain place, and you, you, you go up, you see them in a and you never can't figure out. They keep running the ball up the middle. Well, that's stupid, isn't it, coach? What's he doing? He keeps running the ball up the middle. Keeps running the ball up the middle. Keeps running the ball up the middle. You know, if I was the coach, you know, well, there's a problem. You're not the coach. And what what is it? The coach has a plan. The coach, you know what's happening usually when they're running the ball up the middle? They're wearing down that defense. They're hidden, they're hidden, they're hidden, they're hidden, they're wearing down that defense. And then the next thing you know, next play, they're set for up the middle, and the quarterback goes, boom, baby, down a, down a you know, 50 yard pass, touchdown. What do you do? He wore them out mentally, he wore them out physically. He's got a plan. God's got a plan, praise God. And so, God's not, and so God tells you to make that move, you don't make that move. Because, you know, what would have happened if a, uh, more than likely if, if the quarterback says, bless him, this coach don't know what he's doing. I'm calling a shot here, bless God. And then guess what? He, he throws calls and calls. They're, they're, not, they're, not, uh, uh, they're not knocked down mentally or physically. He goes to throw that pass, and what happens? Interception. Yeah. And another team runs it back for a touchdown. Why? Well, because he took it upon himself. He didn't listen to the coach. we got to listen to the coach for his yeah. <laughs> Coach God is calling the shots. Amen. Mm -hmm. Coach God is calling the plays. And that's what we've got to listen to. Hallelujah. 
God doesn't operate that way. With God, you have to take one step at a time by faith. Many times, he's only going to show you one step, but if you take that step, he'll show you the next step. If God says to go there, you go there. Are you ready? Whether you feel like it or not. You go with what he says. Whether you feel like it or not. The natural man is not too excited about going to God's theirs because he's got his own idea, plans, and purposes. We like to come up with our own ideas and plans and say, God told me. Can I tell you something? If God told you, it would work. <laughs> God told me to Quit my job. Well, if he told you to quit your job, then he's going to provide for you, and you'll see the provision of that. Mm -hmm. Well, God told me to go start this church. Well, God will provide. Can I tell you, this church works supernaturally. A church our size and the tithes and offerings that come into this church is completely supernatural. Amen. Amen. And I'm amazed. I get so excited. Amen? I get so excited when I see the tithe. They tell me what the tithe is and stuff like that. I get so excited, man, because I'm like, man, only God can do that. That's supernaturally. And God is all about, amen, obedience. Being obedient to the call, what He's called us to do. What he's called, where He's called us to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every one of you have a there in your life. A lot of you, he is called to be here. And you need to make that in your, you need to purpose that in your heart today. Amen. Praise God. Pastor talk. <laughs> you need to make that in your a decision in your heart today. Where is my there? Where has God told me to go? And if, I'm, if, I, if God has told me to go there, then everything else just needs to go by the wayside. And I'm not talking about just this church. Whatever ministry God has called you to, you're there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what He's called you to do. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Don't let circumstances, we'll get into this in a minute. Don't let circumstances, don't let people, don't let the devil keep you from going to your there. To keep it, because let me tell you, the enemy's going to come. He's going to put circumstances. He's going to call circumstances. And he'll even put people in your life. Yeah. Amen. To try to talk. I remember when we first came to the city. Amen. Come to the city. If I listen to some of the pastors in here, we quit a long time ago. Oh, ain't nothing happening here in Lafayette. One pastor, still remember, quote for quote, why would you come to Lafayette? There's no, I'm sorry, that's been on. No. Okay. <laughs> Front row people have to watch out. Amen. But if you're blind, praise God. Yeah, well, if we listen to the people who came here to Lafayette, when we first came here to this city, one pastor says, Why would you come to Lafayette? This place is dead. And I said, Well, there's got to be a river of life Amen. flowing. Amen. Praise God. That's what I said. I said, well, I said, we're a river of life. And I said, where well, the river goes, the river flows. Praise God. There's health and healing and provision in the river. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, he'll put people in your, he'll put people to try to talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't mean, though, he'll send people to try to talk you out of where God has placed you at. And they'll be even act like they're from God. <laughs> yeah. You'll think they're from God, man. No. And the whole plan is it's a trap from the enemy right. to cause you to fall into a trap and give up everything he's called you to do. Mm -hmm. right. God's not schizophrenic. God don't change his mind. When God's called you to do something, He's called you to do it. If God's 
set you in a ministry, he's called you to be in that ministry, praise yeah. God. God didn't call Carrie and I to go to another XYZ church. Well, bless God, it's been good here, Pastor. I'll see you later. We're going over to this other church, bless God. Hallelujah. But I stayed, Karen and I stayed till we were what? God promoted us. God does the promotion. Amen. Amen. If you got promoted on your job, it wasn't your boss that promoted you. He might think it was him that promoted. God does the promotions. Amen. God, does. he'll promote you. And I would like to, to uh, put this here too. God's not into demotion. God promotes, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, so, so God didn't set here out another ministry for, for us to go, oh well, it ain't working. Guess we'll go, we're going to do something else. God did not call me to be an evangelist. I would love to evangelize. Amen. I'd love to evangelize. Now there is part of that being in the five-fold ministry. And when God says as pastors, there is, there is that office of teacher. There's that, also, uh, there's that office of prophet. There's that office of, of apostle. There's an office of, uh, evangel of, of, of evangelist. I'll get that here in a minute. And an office of pastor, praise God. But God called me to be a pastor. Amen. Not to run all over. I'd love to run all over town. But God didn't call me to run all over town. You know, you, you, you'll have some, you know, you have to watch for stuff like that. So there's oh man, you ought to be in the benches. And I ought to be what God called me to be. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Do the ministry that God called me to do. Praise God. And don't let people, don't let uh, uh, the, the enemy try to talk you out of what God's called you to do today. Amen. Amen. Because I'm telling you, He'll do it. He'll, he'll send people your way. Listen to the Spirit, man, on the inside. He's ready, willing, and able. See, the Spirit man's willing. Oh, God, I, I want to do that so bad. But when you have this butt come in, but that's the flesh. <laughs> what is it? That's the Spirit man that's willing. Lord, I want to do this so much for you. I love you so much. God, I want to do this so much. But right now, I just, that's the flesh. Your spirit man's willing. Your flesh is the one that's weak. He's ready, willing, and able to go there. Then number two, the, 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 this one here. You need to dwell. We may touch on some more of this next week. You need to dwell where God tells you to go. As I said, God don't change his mind. You need to dwell where God has told you to go. You need to dwell. And, and I don't want this to, I don't want this to seem like I'm talking about a, a, a church. I'm talking about any ministry he sets you in. You need to dwell there. And know that's your place. And uh, I'm going to read this scripture right here. Genesis 35, 1. Genesis 35, 1. Let me read this to you. So I can say I read a scripture this morning. Alright. Genesis 35, 1. That's the first book of the Bible. In case you don't know. God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. He didn't say go by there. <laughs> He said, go and dwell there. So we'll, we'll sing a, uh, we'll sing songs about, uh, oh, I'll go, you know, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I will go wherever you send me on what we're going to sing. It's had of things, you know. Because I've heard it, but it's not in my head right now. But I'll go where you send me, God. I'll go, I'll go do what you call me to do. But, are we willing to dwell or stay where God said he wants us to stay? We read one more to you. Man, when I get the scriptures, it's hard to stop. <laughs> Colossians 4.12. That way we've read one from the Old Testament. Or we'll read one from the 
the New Testament. That way it evens everything out. Praise God. Colossians 4.12. We see that a phrase prayed that the saints might stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. In other words, he prayed, let's read this real quickly. He, I can't pronounce that. Epiphrase. Who is it? Cappuccino? Epiphrase. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Epiphrase, who is one of you, a servant of Christ saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and, listen, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Amen. See, the phrase, he prayed, how do you say his name, Cappuccino, pray that all the saints might stand perfect and complete in the will of God in other words, he prayed that they might be where God told them to be. That they may stay where God wanted them to stay. That was his prayer. That's our prayer for you this morning. That when you come, you will stay where God tells you to stay. Don't let people, don't let the devil talk you out of it. Because see, what the, what's, the enemy, what's the enemy trying to do here? The enemy's trying to do everything in the world to, to if he can pull this minister apart, he'll talk you out of your blessing, he'll talk you out of your ministry. That's right. Yes. And then what you going to do, Willis, whenever that's over with? I'm thinking they're going to catch that. That's another shit. By using circumstances. He'll use, yeah, he'll use circumstances and he'll use it. But where do you go? Uh, well, whenever you, you know, now praise God. Thank God for repentance. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. When you do mess up, it's not over with, all right? Amen. Come on. You can repent and go on. Repent and go on. Amen. Praise God. But sometimes. Sometimes, after God's hollered so much, <laughs> they say, okay, big pants, go for it. <laughs> you want to do this on your own. You don't want to listen to the voice of God. So go on and try it on your own. And then we find out, man, I'm royally messed up. <laughs> I tell you, I've royally messed up in my life before. Because <laughs> I did what Rich wanted to do and I didn't do what God wanted to do. Mm, yeah. Guilty. Mm. <laughs> did not listen to what's God. But praise God, hallelujah. When I come to my senses like a prodigal son. <laughs> yeah. He feels guilty. <laughs> what he did, man, I, he went back and repented, praise God. And his father was there to receive it. And your father is there. If you do mess up, your father is there to right. receive it, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's what I love about him. Amen. That's what I love about the higher heavenly father. Praise God. He's there with open arms to receive his back in the foe of glory to God. I love it. Well, did you get anything out of that this morning? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I had one more scripture, but I think I'll save it. Glory to God. But I get on this scripture and I'm going to start talking another mile. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, thank you, Jesus. Know your place. Know your place. Know your God called place. And you might have to go through some. <laughs> Just like when, when Abraham. Uh, when God called Abram, He said, "Go over here. Go, go to there." Praise God. And uh, Abraham, uh, Bible says that he, he just got up and he left families, everything else, yes, to do what God called him to do. He thought more about what God thought instead of what he thought was good for him. He thought more about what God thought, and uh, that. that that's carrying out his prayers. Uh, that 
we, we think we think about our Heavenly Father, what He wants rather than what we want. Amen? Praise mm -hmm. God. So, um, and stay in prayer. Know where God's called you to be. Know that the enemy wants to uproot you and pull you out. So he'll, he'll, he'll do everything, like I said, well, I, I did get to this point, I was on it, and I... But he would love to shut River of Life now. Oh, yeah. That's right. He can shut it down, man. All these promises we've heard about, that he's called us to do, if he can stop it, stop the work, then this town's going to stay the same. In your ministry, He'll do anything he can to uproot your mission. Shut your ministry down. That's why some of our, uh, we were talking about it last, maybe last Sunday or so. But you know, I remember, I'm not going to call her name, but uh, um, an anointed uh, praise and worship person. Uh, we said her name, you know, man. Had hits on the radio, and uh, was anointed of God. And, and what do he, he? The enemy threw a wrench out there and shut his ministry down. It's happened more than once. Ministers of the gospel, you see them on TV. <laughs> you know the scandals. What was he doing? Shutting their mouth. And they fell for it. And those ministries, I'm sure some are still out there. Some of them are completely shut down now. Some are out there still trying to go on, but the damage was done. Did God restore that person? Well, I could be a course. People that, that repented and the people that asked for forgiveness, of course God restored them. But at the same time, you can do some damage that sometimes you just can't come back from. Is it impossible? Of course not. With God, all things are possible. But it's where your faith is. Amen. If you're living defeated, and you think you've been defeated, and, and you don't have the teaching like we have here, praise God, about walking in faith, walking in love, you don't have that kind of, uh, of teaching, amen, and, and you think you're defeated, then you're going to walk defeated, and you'll never rise back up again. So, hallelujah, praise God. Stand strong. Yeah. Do what God has called you to do. Yeah, don't let the devil, don't let people talk you out of it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Stand strong. And do what God has called you to do. And watch it succeed. Yeah. Well, we're in the time, we're in the time frame now where I'm talking about we got to go home. <laughs> And we're in the time frame now where I'm talking about things are supernaturally speeding up. Praise God. I believe it was Rod Parsley. I'll shut up after this, I promise. But it was Rod Parsley. You know, he proclaimed, he said, what used to take seconds is taking minutes. What used to take minutes is taking hours. What used to take, what used to take, I'm sorry. What used to, I got it backwards. I'm sorry. What used to take Hours is taking minutes. Well, it used to take minutes. It is taking seconds now. That's how God's working. Amen. He's turning around. Praise God. And He's turning around for you too today. Hallelujah. So, glory to God. Let's give the Lord another hand cup of praise. I speak blessings over you in Jesus' name. Father, thank you as we leave here today. We walk out of here full of joy. We walk out of here full of faith. We walk out of here knowing what you called us to do. Lord, that we're not going to let we're not going to let the enemy talk us out of it. We're not going to allow the enemy to uproot us from what you've called us to do. We praise you for it this morning. Lord, we stand firm. We stand our ground today, and we love you. And we thank you for it. We call everyone in here blessed. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.